In this next uh, section, I want to cover some of the basic terminology uh, and, and, and really some fundamental concepts in, in about uh, research and research methods and how quantitative research methods play a role. And quantitative methods are a form of empirical research. So empirical, not to be you know, confused with an empire, but empirical uh, is any kind of research that is based on or concerned with or verifiable by observation or experience. So in, in all empirical research, we are uh, uh, doing some sort of observation of the world around us. Now in statistics, that often means we are collecting some data, like asking people to fill out a survey, or we're making measurements, like measuring the heights of trees or the density of, a, of how many pine beetles there are in a hectare of forest. We're making measurements. Now, empirical research doesn't stop with quantitative measurements. Uh, sociologists are, and other social scientists are often going out into the field and conducting interviews and making empirical observations about people or places but not necessarily numerical observations. These are notes about, you know, um, uh, there's a lot of information that we can observe around us that isn't necessarily quantifiable. And that doesn't mean it's non-empirical. But uh, from empirical research, we have this notion of something called the empirical method. And the empirical method is an approach uh, where we try to collect data and use that data collection effort to create theory or to ask a question and answer a question or to guide us in making some sort of policy to to affect a system that we're studying. So the key thing with the empirical method is we are trying to do empirical research in order to answer a question about how a system works or how we can affect change in a system. And one of the key tools that we have in order to conduct empirical research is statistics. And statistics, one definition is the collection, analysis, interpretation, and presentation of quantitative data. So statistics doesn't start with a spreadsheet of numbers that we try to analyze. Statistics is used right out from the onset in terms of when we go out and do data collection then it's used in some sort of analysis, and we st uh, need to interpret the results of our analysis, and then from that interpretation, make some sort of conclusion, present that conclusion, either in terms of an update to theory or as a policy recommendation. And statistics at the highest level can be split off into two different branches. The first branch is what we call descriptive statistics. And descriptive statistics is concerned with the summarization, organization, and presentation of data. And uh, there's lots of different ways to summarize and organize and present data. One way is uh, to present data numerically. So here we have a list of numbers, and how we are going to organize or make sense of these numbers is to describe those numbers uh, with things like t uh, averages and rates and ranges. So trying to um, take a large list of numbers and describe it with the average of that set of numbers. So we might have a data set of tree heights for a forest, and instead of trying to describe that forest to someone by listing off every single height of every tree in the forest, we might just say something like, on average, trees in this forest are 40 feet tall, and on average, trees in another forest are 35 feet tall. And there we've used statistics in order to uh, describe or summarize tree heights in different forests. Uh, another method for describing or, or, or another method in descriptive statistics is uh, tabular methods. So tabular means tables. We are trying to make tables 
in order to get a point across or in, or in order to describe a large set of numbers. So we're going to talk about different types of tables in the course, uh, so let's not go into the details here. But in addition to tables, we might try to draw a picture. We might try to graph the data in order to describe it or organize it or make sense of the data. So we are going to be looking at different types of graphs to use in order to describe data sets. And finally, since this is a geography course, another major way that we can describe geographic data is through cartographic techniques. So here we are making maps, uh, thematic maps, maps that try to um, to illustrate a particular process on the Earth's surface. Now, descriptive statistics for most of you are going to be really easy to understand. They're quite uh, common sense. They're n they don't require a big understanding of mathematical theory or anything like that to 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 make sense of descriptive statistics. The other branch of statistics, and this is where we're going to spend most of our time in this course, is uh, on inferential statistics. So in inferential statistics, we're trying to use observations in order to um, in, in order to make a statement about a population. And here I don't mean a population like the population of a country is 25 million. We are going to define in, 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 in a couple slides, but I might as well tell you now that in statistics we're always dealing with two things, populations and samples. Now a sample is a subset of the population. So as a geographer, we might be interested in the population of all Douglas fir trees in a forest. But we don't collect information about every tree in the forest. We're going to go out and sample those trees and take maybe 50 of the trees and make measurements of those 50 trees. And in inferential statistics, what we're trying to do is, is see whether the information we learn about those 50 trees can be used in a way to tell us about the status of all the trees in the forest. And that's going to become less opaque or less abstract as we move along. So in inferential statistics, we are going to be making estimates. And an estimate is a guess about the population based on a description of the sample. So in that Douglas fir example, uh, we might measure a sample of trees and realize that the average tree height in that sample was 40 feet. And now we want to estimate what's the average tree height for the entire forest based on the fact that the tree height in the sample on average was 40 feet. So we might make an estimate and say, well, on average, we would expect then trees in the entire forest to also be 40 feet tall. And when we try to take that estimate and formalize it in a way uh, that allows us to, to ask a question, then we are engaging in, in hypothesis testing. So in hypothesis testing, we are going to set up this process of making observations about a sample and formalizing it in a way that we are um, able to uh, refute or uh, argue against or for a certain hypothesis that we have about the population. And because of the, the, the very different nature of these two branches of statistics, descriptive statistics are usually considered to be exploratory methods. So we are performing descriptive statistics when we want to discover new trends or patterns in the data. And on the other hand, inferential statistics are usually considered confirmatory methods or conformat confirmatory, um, yeah, sorry, confirmatory methods. So with inferential statistics, we are usually trying to confirm whether or not some hypothesis is true. 
we might hypothesize that trees have been declining in height over the last 10 years. So we might want to use inferential statistics to confirm whether or not that hypothesis is true.